New Year and wishing you and your loved ones a happy, peaceful and prosperous New Year. Welcome to the first Breeding to Win show of 2022. And as Cape Town heats up for the La Marons Queen's Plate and the Met, now sponsored by World Sports Betting, Fiona Ramsden catches up with the Managing Director of Cape Thoroughbred Sales for their up-and-coming Cape Premier Yearling Sale, which takes place on Sunday, the 6th of February. The Cape Premier Yearling Sale is just over a month away on the 6th of February. It's once again held at the beautiful de Grendel Wine Estate. And Grant Knowles is with me this morning to tell us a little bit more about what we can expect. Grant, lovely to see you this morning. I hope you had a great Christmas. Yeah, Fee, thanks very much. Always a great time of the year with all the big races. We've had both the Guineases and uh, great results there for CTS graduates. So a nice time of the year, but yeah, getting close to the big sale. And, getting quite excited about that as well. Yeah, it's a really exciting month ahead and I know us as the Breeding to Win team are looking forward to getting out there and seeing all the yearlings this coming month and uh, what a great catalogue it is. Delighted with the catalogue uh, and yeah, and it's something that CTS always does, we send you guys out as part and parcel of the entry fee and we do the filming and the recording so Wayne Marks Bay Media will be going along with yourself and uh, taking images, the confirmation shots and then also walking videos. We got a nice uh, initiative coming up with some of the UK buyers as well. We'd like to give them as much information online as possible and uh, obviously that's where the videos and the photographs come in really handy but uh, catalogue wise absolutely delighted we've got some of the strongest stallions representing in the country standing on the sale and uh, and some nice big drafts from some of the top farms as well so all in all very happy yeah there's certainly some quality in that catalogue now what can we expect in the build-up to the sale because there's always lots on that week before when the horses move in and there's golf days and things happening well for the first time the sale is going to be held the weekend after the Met so obviously uh, the build-up is going to be fantastic we've got the Queen's Plate coming up obviously and then uh, the Met now sponsored by World Sports Betting so those are great little uh, preludes to coming up for the sale and then obviously directly after that we'll have the golf day on the 3rd of February out at Atlantic Beach and there are still a few four balls available if you'd like to enter a four ball you just need to contact Brad at Corporate Golf Solution and those details will come on screen and uh, yeah a couple of four balls left there and that's always a great day and a nice way for some of the stud farms who, who take the holes to promote their horses that are going to be coming on sale as well and then we'll have a couple of uh, wine tasting evenings out at the Crendel during the course of that week and the Crendel have been such amazing hosts to the Cape Premier Yearling Sale and uh, we're looking forward to a slightly different area where the Bedouin's going to be going up a little bit closer to the stables. Uh, De Crendel have really made that lawn look absolutely fantastic for us. And we've got power there now as well, so we don't need a generator. So it really is starting to build itself into a quality sales venue. So that's all very exciting. And then the sale itself, the Sunday after the Met on the 6th of February. And uh, we've had quite a nice little bit of uh, international interest already. Obviously, we were quite concerned at one point, Fee, when uh, we were still on the red list. And we were worried that some of the internationals wouldn't be able to come out here and participate. But uh, obviously since then we've been lifted off that and uh, we've had quite a few inquiries for catalogues from the UK buyers. And I think it's going to be a nice sell. And obviously the whole industry is on a little bit of a high at the moment with four racing taking over, some quality races. So I think uh, everything's looking quite bright. Yeah, super setting and as I said some quality horses up for grabs. But. Uh Last year we had the, the inaugural running of the Gold Rush where you could buy 16 tickets to get involved with the Gold Rush. That's happening again, so there'll be 16 tickets on offer again. Just tell us how that works again because that's so exciting, isn't it? Well, there's a little bit of a crib from uh, the Pegasus and the Everest races overseas where instead of having everybody contribute and try to get the best horses in the race, 16 people can actually purchase outright entrances into that race. Seven and a half million rands the stake, first prize of five million rands. So there's one ticket still outstanding from last year's sale and it's at the buy-in price of 600,000 Rand and that's the only ticket left for that that particular year but obviously now we start afresh runners and graduates from uh, the sale the first one held well, obviously are only starting to run now so I think the momentum is really going to start picking up as the two-year-old races starts and then you'll start seeing the uh, owners of those tickets really start watching those graduates and uh, either see how theirs are turning out if they've bought themselves a horse they could maybe qualify and be competitive in that race or if they're looking at somebody else's horse and saying I need to strike a bit of a partnership deal with uh, Joe Bloggs. Uh, his horse looks to be the right one coming forward for that race. So we have already sold a couple of tickets for this year's one. Uh, World Sports Betting have come on board and they're going to put their name behind the Gold Rush 2. And uh, so it'll be Gold Rush 2 powered by World Sports Betting. So a big thank you to Rayno and his team. And I'm sure they'll really enhance it because the Gold Rush race is actually run on Met Day. And now World Sports Betting have recently announced that they're going to be sponsoring the Met as well. So the whole thing ties in really well. So that's quite an exciting prospect for us, but I think uh, 
just the way the racing starts to pick up now with the two-year-olds and we start seeing some of the graduates running, by the time our sale comes up in Feb, there'll be a lot of people putting their hand up again to try and get a ticket for the gold rush. I'm not doing a draw this year. It's going to be sold first come, first serve basis. So uh, as I said, there have been quite a few sales already and um, it'll be interesting to see how the guys start looking at the catalogue and saying, well, we want to buy a horse here at the sale. We don't want to miss out and not have a ticket for the gold rush. No, it's been a super initiative. It really has been fantastic. It really gets people on the edge of their seat and, and excited and uh, really looking forward to it. And how do people go about now getting a catalogue, getting a, a table, getting their buyers cards organised? Well, they need to contact uh, the team at CTS and uh, obviously Anne Dalton will do your table bookings. I think everybody's got Anne's details. They know her very well by now. Um, she'll do all the table bookings. If you're looking for a catalogue, they are at all the race courses around the country. But we've also got uh, a facility to be able to courier to you. So if you do need one courier to you, you just need to email admin at cthbs.com and we'll have one delivered to you as soon as possible. So uh, yeah, everything's out. And as you mentioned earlier, Fee, the catalogue is really, really of a high standard. So looking forward to that. And uh, I'm sure you guys will be looking forward to going around and seeing just what uh, quality stock we have on offer. We certainly are. And obviously the buyers, they can get themselves out to the farms as well. The horses obviously will be at the venue the week before, but you know anyone who's interested can get out to those farms as well beforehand. Yeah, a lot of the big yards actually make a plan with the farms directly and they say uh, guys can we come out and have a look so it just obviously narrows down the amount of time they have to look out at De Crendel. but then I think De Crendel also lends itself to people going out having a good look at horses and then going on to the deck then uh, sampling some De Crendel wines while you watch the sunset over the bay so uh, also a lot of guys enjoy doing that so it makes makes for a really nice cozy viewing experience obviously with the restaurant there as well and even a couple of game drives available to go see the wonderful herd of uh, Eland that De Villiers Craft has on the farm as well. So there's just so much to do around that area. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's a fantastic month ahead. I'm certainly looking forward to it. Well, I'm sure we'll catch up with you again. But uh, best of luck and we look forward to seeing you there, Grant. Absolutely. And uh, maybe we can get Rayno on for the next uh, chat about the sale as well. And he'll tell you just about uh, their involvement with the gold rush going forward as well. Absolutely. Fantastic. Best of luck. Really looking forward to be out, being out at De Grendel on the 6th of February for the Cape Premier Yearling Sale. And as I said, I'm also looking forward to seeing all the yearlings this coming month out at the farms. For Racing was recently granted their operating licence by the Gauteng Gambling Board. And on the 1st of December, they officially took over. It is my pleasure to welcome the racing operator of For Racing to the Breeding to Win show to discuss the future of racing in South Africa, and especially in Gauteng and the Western Cape and Eastern Cape. And Colin Gordon, lovely to have you on the Breeding to Win show. Hi, Jill. Thanks very much for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity. Well, it's been a long road. 4-4 racing but eventually you guys have got there and um, Colin what's the future now what's the plan of 4 racing? Well Jules I think the most important thing and definitely a principle that will guide us is we don't want to do the same things uh, over over, uh, over, and over again um, and expect different results so we definitely had a strategic look at the industry what we are planning to do is try new things um, if they fail then you know move on to to the next um, but we certainly can't keep going and doing the things that got us to where a business rescue was needed etc so you would have seen in the press releases around stakes around fixtures um, we are planning to do things differently hoping they achieve the desired results um, and um, certainly with the feedback and the participation from our stakeholders etc to take the industry forward well, the stakes have been a huge problem since COVID and when Pumalela went into business rescue because everything kind of was chopped. How are you going to get the stakes back to where they were, Paul? Well, Julie, um, we've announced, and uh, hopefully everybody saw that before they went off on leave and ahead of the sales, we've announced a total stakes commitment of uh, 207 odd million rand. Um, I think a very interesting that if you looked at what the stakes agreement would have delivered for this year with all those problems that you mentioned such as COVID and the riots etc where a number of stores were disrupted etc it would have delivered something in the region of 177 million rand for those three regions um, and uh, so we made the announcement of 207 million there are a couple of um, very important factors within that and that was in-season racing for our major centres in the form of Western Cape and Gauteng um, and what that means is that in those periods of November through to the end of April for Gauteng and November through to the end of February 
for the Western Cape. There'll be elevated stakes across all the minor race levels. Um, and you can also then target your your horses in terms of your better horses competing in those in those time frames or in those regions. Um, it fits in nicely and hopefully in the long term turn with Gold Circle when we've got a national uh, construct uh, that their season starts on the 1st of May and ends uh, July and horses can chase the stakes across those seasons. From an Eastern Cape perspective, being a minor centre, uh, it was felt that the stakes should remain for the minor stakes at the same level across the year. Another important thing though is that during those COVID times to help as much as possible with the minor race stakes, the, um, the grade one, grade two, three enlisted stakes were, were slashed and I think everybody conceded that uh, you go to the sales to buy horses that hopefully will compete in those races. We know that the majority turn out not to be that good, but um, you still aspire to buy horses for those races, and we needed those stakes uh, to be protected in those races. So as part of that stakes announcement, we also made a commitment that your grade ones would be for no less than a million uh, on the, for the open races and 750,000 for the fillies and mares. Similarly, in the grade two races, 400,000 and, uh, it's, and down to listed for 175. And then the fillies, uh, races for the fillies only roughly at 75% of those. Uh, obviously, when you get sponsors on board and we can add stakes for those races, um, we can supplement those stakes and really boost the majors. Uh, but those are the minimums and we're very pleased to have made that announcement. So with Four Racing, when they took over Pumalela's assets, there were some assets that they've decided to keep, other assets they've decided to let go. What was the decision between that and, and why? So, so Jules, um, what, we, what we had was that um, the transaction in terms of it wasn't buying Pumalela, as you say. Mm. They bought out certain of the assets uh, in that transaction. Part of that was um, taking the tote. It was the various, uh, and obviously then applying for those tote licenses, etc., the, and the various race courses. Um, the, they, they hadn't bought Teletrack uh, because that's a partnership, so it wasn't Pumalela's or the business rescue practitioners to sell, that was a partnership. And then obviously there were assets within there uh, that were owned with partners, etc., various bookmaking assets and that, that um, at that point in time uh, the, uh, the, 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 the people responsible for the transaction did not uh, purchase. So you've got the tote. The tote facilities in the past have been a problem, um, and that's going back years ago, as well as the tote of recent, I think since you guys took over, <laughs> it's almost like gremlins have crept into the system and you've had one or two upheavals with that. So are you guys fixing those problems or how's it going to work? Yeah, uh, again, there's no choice but to get it right and get it sorted out. And from a tote perspective, I think what you've uh, got to liken it to is if you haven't really been uh, uh, applying the latest hardware, the latest software, the latest updates, etc. If you're trying to put on something new, uh, there's some very exciting developments that we're hoping to introduce to, um, to our punters uh, in, in coming times. You wouldn't be able to do those things without um, without latest software and that. And whether it's um, whether it's the gutters at the Vol, the light bulbs in Turfontaine, or the hardware and software, those things need constant maintenance, etc. And which we now have to examine the the deficit, the gaps, and and start fixing those. So. I know asking for patience is a stretch. Uh, you know, the punters want to participate in and use the latest software and have ease of, ease of use, etc., and have exciting new innovations, etc. But we, um, but we will get there and we will improve this product dramatically. What For Racing has done is secured um, a, a mechanism in which to broadcast uh, racing 
on um, the multi-choice platform going forward. There's some exciting announcements coming out about that. Testing will begin during the month of January and we'd be looking to be fully live on that at a, a, at a period between uh, January and end of February for our launch, our official launch on the 1st of March. Colin, you've been involved in racing for many years and you've probably been involved in every aspect of racing other than being a trainer or a jockey, obviously for your size because I pro you probably would have tried that too. But you're a man that's very passionate and I do believe that's what racing is needed to head the sport up and get it back to where it's going. So on behalf of the Breeding to Win team, we wish you all the very best. I certainly wouldn't want to be in your shoes at this stage for all the money. Um, but what would the message you would give to the racing fraternity out there at the moment, be it a trainer, an owner, a punter, even a sponsor? Well, I think some of my trainers will tell you I've attempted to train some of my horses as an owner. Um, but no, Jules, um, I think for everybody involved in racing, first of all is to say thank you for the absolute resilience uh, that the racing industry has shown through this period. It's been an incredibly tough time. Uh, the trainers, the jockeys, everybody. Uh, if there's less money flowing within the sport, um, it's been uh, difficult. Um, but I think probably the people that we most need to reach out to are our punters. At the end of the day, uh, we can talk about owners, we can talk about trainers, jockeys, etc. But the, the, the punters absolutely drive the sport. And we need to fix that product for them. We need to be better at it. Our customer service needs to be better. So it's really to those people that I, I want to reach out to and say to them, guys, uh, we probably don't deserve your patience, but we are working uh, extremely hard behind the scenes to give you a product that you are going to uh, want to use, um, and uh, we are going to fix it. Thank you so much for your time, and on behalf of the Breeding to Win team, we wish you all the very best. Well, that's a wrap for this week's edition of Breeding to Win. Don't forget to join us next week for more Breeding to Win action. From myself, Julie Alexander, and the rest of the Breeding to Win team, he is hoping that your 2022 is everything you wish it to be and more.